JDT versus Selangor. Go to the Red Giants. Go to the Red Giants. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Here's the clip. Welcome to episode two of The Honest Footballer. Um, I don't know if I'm getting better at talking to the camera, being less fidgety, doing this with my hands, but we're getting there. Um, just a recap on what's been happening since I've left quarantine. Um, obviously, I was on TV on Astro, um, and we spoke about a few offers that I had, and they were really trying to get it out of me. Um, and it was a great experience, actually, going back on TV seeing as I've been away for so long and um, Craig who's helped me loads massively obviously commercially in Malaysia before um, he's still a very good friend of mine he managed to get me an interview on, on live TV kind of like the Sky Sports of um, actually more like the Soccer AM Soccer AM ish of, of, of Malaysia if you're going to compare it to England um, so I was on there as you've just seen in the clip before and we spoke about um, the reason why I've come back, um, how I'm feeling about it. Actually, funny you should say that. I'll tell you a story quickly about what happened on the interview. So before the interview, Craig said to me, um, don't look at the cameras, make sure you're looking at the host because it's an interview, okay? And um, at the end, she's gone, is there, do you have a message that you want to say to the fans? Um, and I've like, Sort of as I'm saying, I've, I've started to say, yeah, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to the season. And the cameraman starts waving his hands like this, as if to look at the camera. So I've like turned to the camera, and as I've turned, I'm sort of midway through talking, but there's script on the camera. So I'm thinking, oh, he wants me to read. They've, they've written something for me. So I've gone, yeah, obviously I'm really excited for the season, um, and. Um, Thank you. Do you know what? Here's a clip, and you can all laugh at me. <laughs> I'm excited to, to be to be back in Malaysia, um, and thank you. You know, it's a pleasure to have you, and we wish you um, good luck and everything. You know, I'm, I'm really excited to be here and back in Malaysia. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Junior. Thank you for your time, for coming you. here. Thank you. It's all... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, I was so fuming after the finish. But to be fair, because I did the interview in Malaysian, no one actually kind of recognised it. But now I've put it on YouTube. Um, just so you guys back home can laugh at me, to be fair. So, but yeah, since, that, since the interview, obviously, I had um, four offers from Malaysia. Um, and I was set on moving to KL because I've got such a good base of friends over in KL and I thought obviously me coming back from being away for two years would be the perfect sort of city for me to transition myself back into professional football, being around a good environment, being around good friends. So I was looking at apartments to stay at, um, you know, looking at cars to rent. Contract at a club was actually ready and this is where the twist is. So the contract at a club was ready, everything was agreed. And I was waiting for, you know, every day they were saying, oh, this will, this will, this will, this will, which means tomorrow. And I said, oh, is there a problem or anything? They said, no, no, it's fine. And then it gets to a point where you're, where you start chasing the club and you're chasing your agent to chase the club and you start, start to feel sort of unwanted. Um, and that's how I started feeling. It wasn't a nice feeling because it went from sort of being wanted by so many teams to making a decision with a team for them to turn around and sort of, make things slow and try to drag things on a bit. It just made me feel really anxious about myself and I didn't know whether I was going to settle, what was going to happen because, you know, every week goes by, it goes closer to the start of the season, start of the pre-season. So I didn't really know how to prepare myself because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, then a team comes in for me, another team comes in for me and within two days, so they, they, they put the offer letter in they phone my agent, put the offer letter in, put the contract in the next day, then the gaffer calls me. Um, and that was just a massive difference. Massive, massive, there are two teams contrasted where a team sort of says they agree to have you, but then they take time at the paperwork and stuff. And then another team that comes in for you, who really wants you, 
and makes the effort to make sure that the requirements are met for the player and obviously for the club as well. So, you know, that made me make my decision very quickly. And I was sort of, I'm in an R in and I spoke to um, Kevin Cooper, who's used to play at Swansea. Um, he's actually working in Malaysia with Jamie. And, you know, he's some, both of them are two people who I value. I value their opinions because, you know, they've been around the pro game for X amount of years. You know, Kevin Cooper was at Swansea, played at AFC Wimbledon. Um, so it was advice that I needed to hear. Um, so yeah, with that advice, I've actually made a decision and I'm completely shifted shifted what I thought I was gonna do this year. And you know, I think in life, you can either go two ways. You either choose to be comfortable and it's hard because I've already moved my life back to Malaysia and I knew KL would be comfortable for me because like you said, like I said earlier, I've got my friends, I've got a good network in KL, I've got a good network in Malaysia. Um, or do I then challenge myself at another opportunity in a completely different country, learn a new language, learn the culture and go again like I did when I was 21. Um, and for me, and just this is just me personally, and how my personality is, I, I love new challenges and I love new experiences. So stemmed, with that thought process, alongside the advice of the people I trust around me, I made a decision um, on where I should go. So I'm excited, I'm excited, and I'm sure you're gonna find out um, very soon on episode three where, where you'll see my next decision. So we heard that uh, you have um, other offer from few teams but uh, maybe we nak bagi special announcement dekat sini uh, have special. you decided uh, uh, team mana you nak pilih mm -hmm. tidak boleh tidak boleh tak boleh okey okay. bagi uh, hint sikit je hint uh, hint, hint. saya boleh UK untuk main dengan Chelsea ha tu tak payah mention hmm. just team hint. tapi bagi hint a bit Tak boleh. <laughs> tak bagi satu perkataan saja. Ada, ada, ada four offers lah. Ada four offers. Ada, oh, ada four offers. Ada empat offers. Tapi But sekarang... But you have... Belum lagi decide? Belum, belum. Okay, Memang uh, minggu, empat, minggu, empat minggu, minggu ni. Empat minggu tapi tak decide lagi. Okay. Minggu Sarawak. depan. Minggu ni, depan. So macam mana? Uh -huh. um, bagi you sendiri, you akan hmm. join team mana? <laughs> <laughs> Masih cuba lagi. Masih. Tak akan give up. Tak boleh lagi. Oh, boleh, tak boleh, tak boleh. Maybe, uh, maybe after this, you beritahu saya dengan akhir. Boleh, boleh. boleh. Tak okay. boleh. Satu, <laughs> satu hint. Satu hint je. Tadi ada empat. Uh, Kumpulan kan? But definitely yeah. you akan mainlah dengan Ni ni ada ni agent lah. Sekarang dia tengah tengah marah. Jangan, jangan, jangan cakap, jangan cakap. <laughs> Tapi okay, Super League, okay. Super League. Super League, yeah. Super League. Okay, Alright, Super League. Super League. Super League. Yeah. Alright. But um, before that, I am going to Johor to see the Prince uh, TMJ. So Johor JDT is the team I used to play for and it's owned by the Crown Prince of Johor TMJ. So we've, um, we've kept very close since my departure two years ago. You know, he's got a place in London, so whenever he comes back, we catch up. And I haven't seen him for a year because of the virus and stuff. Um, actually, probably less than that, because I came in, I came and played the All-Star game, which he invited me to, which was an amazing experience, playing with Rivaldo, Ronaldo, Materazzi, all these players. Um, so I'm going to Johor to see him and see the new stadium, see the new facilities um, that he's done. I can't keep up because every year, Johor is just building new stuff and, and, and becoming so much bigger and it's just amazing to see something like that in Southeast Asian football and I'll always be an advocate for Johor and I'll always sing their praises because even for the time I was there it was such an amazing experience and compare that to the other teams in Southeast Asia like you can't really compare it like you can't even compare Johor to most clubs in Europe in regards to their facilities and, and how they do things so I'm excited to go see TMJ um, for two days before my next chapter which you'll find out about and um, yeah I think I'm gonna catch up with Levere who's there and Brendan Gann who's actually staying at, um, he's on holiday in Desaru at the minute so I'm gonna catch up with both of them uh, get a good interview on on how they found life transitioning from different cultures Corbin came from Holland at the time Brendan came from uh, Sydney so completely two different cultures coming back to Malaysia to represent Malaysia and represent Malaysian football, which I had to do at a very young age. So it'd be interesting to hear how what they had to deal with um, and compare that to what I had to go with as well. I'm 
flying to Johor now for two days and then I'll land back in KL Saturday night. Right, let's go, let's go baby. Yeah. <laughs> With the two Malaysian top dogs, Lavir <laughs> and Brendan Gan, take two. Welcome to the Honest Footballer. We're well, honesty, comes first. Do it that way, mate. Do it that way. Don't do it that way. I'm catching up with the Matt Sally boys in Malaysia. Um, Gan has been here for many years. One of the first top dogs to get in here. Corbin's been out long? Three years? Three years now. Three years now. So it's always nice catching up with the Matt Sally boys. Um, so here's a little bit of an insight of what they had to go through when they uh, when they first came to Malaysia. What is it? <laughs> it's you. Eight, oh, isn't it 18 today? Was wow. it your three-year anniversary? Three years. Years. Congrats, well done. Congrats. All right, so obviously the question I want to ask was, how do you find Malaysia in comparison to obviously being back home? Well, for me, it was a lot different back uh, 2012 I got in. So um, I was here as a foreigner at first, and um, it was kind of getting back into that, that period of foreigners coming into uh, the league again. I think there was only two foreigners allowed. And um, for me, the transition was quite hard. Uh, my first year was, was very difficult. Uh, coming from a very professional team in Sydney, and then coming to a club that you know just wanted to compete um, in, in the league and, and not have facilities, um, you know, it was, it was quite difficult for me. But it allowed me to grow that year, and, and um, I found that as a positive after the year had already finished. Um, it, was, uh, it allowed me to, to be more calm, confident as a player and myself. Um, because you, you get left alone as a foreigner, so um, yeah, everything everything is a positive in my eyes. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a lot different uh, when I started to when you started, I guess. What about you, Corbzy? How was it? Yeah, for me, it was a little bit easier to make the transition because of you guys, a lot of you guys helped me come into the system, show me around, especially junior when I was in uh, JD, helped me show me where to go and kind of navigate the whole uh, the horse system. Obviously, not easy coming from another country, but. With the help, with the networking, with all the guys in the team, yeah, that was easier, especially And what was it like representing Malaysia for the first time? Amazing. That was, that was the pinnacle of my career for sure. Because as as a footballer, the, the highest point uh, that you can that you can get as, as a footballer is to play for a national team. You know, did you feel like Malaysia was like your, because obviously you're dual nationality, right? So did you feel like when you represented Malaysia, it was like, felt like home? 100%. My, my father, I've never seen my father smile and, and, and cry at the same time. And, and that was uh, the exact feeling uh, that, I, that I had when I played because it made my dad so happy. And, and for myself as a footballer, to, to be able to reach that pinnacle was, was amazing for me. How are you, Corbzy? Yeah, so many years, also same thing like Brendan. Um, I never thought in all the years that I'd be playing for Malaysia and represent our country. So for me, it's also a proud that I can represent my own country, represent my country. And so far, we've been doing great things with the national squad. And hopefully, just up and up. Yeah, you want to play, bro. Yeah, you want to play, bro. And what was, in regards to leaving, obviously, your, your home, which was Australia for you, Australia for you, Ghani, and Canada for you, right, Paul? So did you come straight from Germany? Okay, from Holland, see, there's bad research there for me. Bad research there for me. Oh, you you know you are, you know He's Canadian, he lived in Vancouver. His name's actually Lafayette, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, what was the big, what was the hardest sacrifice you had to make as a professional athlete? Uh, for me, family, family and friends. Uh, as, as a footballer, you, you start to, uh, you, you kind of get in your own zone and um, you become a lot selfish. Um, you know, family becomes, uh, take the back seat, I guess, into what you want to pursue as your dreams. And um, for me, it's overseas, and to do that, you have to leave your family and friends. And you miss birthdays, you miss anniversaries, you miss you miss everything, you miss weddings, um, you miss births of, of your, my sister's uh, children and whatnot, so you miss a lot. And, um, you know, that takes a toll. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, to play football, I think for yourself as well, it's, it's amazing to be able to play at this level and, and play the national team, and I think, Anyone in our position would also uh, take those sacrifices. What about you, Cole? What was your biggest sacrifice? Yeah, for me it was a little bit different because I made the transition when I was, I think, 18 or 19, and I left home, went to Europe to play football. So to make the move from Holland to Malaysia was a bit easier than having to make the move from my home to Malaysia. Um, but like Brendan said, you just missed on the on the big, uh, big events. What was, it, what was it like when you were like so young having to leave your family at such a young age? Yeah, it's difficult because you have to come into your own, you have to develop into your own person. And you, 
realize the things that you were missing or not not doing like for the first three months and maybe I didn't even speak to my parents because I just didn't, yeah. didn't click, you know, I just didn't get that they're still interested in what I'm doing and I should be keeping in touch. But then so you grow up a little bit. You grow up very fast. Yeah. Very quickly and then yeah, exactly just become your own yeah, person. Sick. Well, cheers, guys. Good luck in your season um, upcoming. They'll be going against each other. JDT versus Selangor. Woo hoo hoo! Go the Red Giants! Listen, end of episode two. Thank you so much for being here, being with me. I hope you enjoy the content. You know, I'll try to be as raw and honest as I can be. Please like, subscribe, share, and help me grow the channel. Like I said, honesty comes first. At the honest football life, one of the cheesiest lines ever, but we'll go with it. Recap on a few little things and pieces. F me, what a shame. <laughs> Don't know whether I should do it. <laughs> Barney, absolutely. Brandon, Lighting, Bosch. <laughs>